causes, but also on Near East and Northern Africa. It means that we compare uh, uh, the, the post-Ottoman space uh, and mainly we uh, research about social, uh, historical, cultural, linguistic, political and uh, psychological aspects of identity, group, minority, conflict formatation and cooperation process in multi-ethnic, multi-religious and multilingual societies. Okay, that was a lot, <laughs> but this covers uh, everything and in this context for the moment, uh, uh, my main project is about symbiosis similarities and cooperation between Albanians and Southern Slavs uh, on the Balkans uh, and in this context further uh, the uh, researches in Skodra are just a part of this uh, research. So I just want uh, to give you a hint also to the project in Austria, at Vanishing Language and Cultural Heritage. There um, we make uh, video interviews uh, with people who speak uh, a kind of language or who uh, uh, is able to practice uh, uh, cultural features which are in danger uh, of uh, uh, disappearing. So these are also a lot of local varieties and in this context uh, uh, we have uh, movies from, from Latin America, from mainly also from the Balkans, uh, about the Kalmyks uh, and something more. In Iran also uh, we researched but uh, we have also here the Bosnian, Croatian, Montenegrin and Serbian part and within this part we have as you can see the Montenegrin there, but it is, this is uh, otherwise a little bit complicated because you see the marked uh, map there. Uh, uh, our first uh, uh, step was uh, to research Guzla, uh, uh, songs and Guzla player. So we had the interviews with them in the region of Nikšić with the orthodox Guzla players, but then you see uh, on the right, this is Rožaja. But uh, the Guslari there are uh, Bosniaks and Albanians, or mixed Albanian Bosniaks, the Guslari. And so uh, we make a comparison. But anyhow, politically, uh, it's difficult to call the language Montenegrin because they call the language Bosnian or Bosniak. Uh, that these are kind of uh, uh, technical difficulties we have uh, by the creation of the homepage. We also have uh, this year had some uh, publications, especially uh, over Vlach, uh, uh, also about Sufism, for example, uh, but also about the uh, language, especially about the language of the Bosniaks in Turkey. Mm, and in this context, we have also cooperation with Montenegro, with Adria Karovic. Uh, so I published last year and this year two articles in Almanach. The Chasso piece is Zaštitu Bastide Manina Bosniaka i Muslimana. Tamo i Istona Cernogorskom, Bosanskom i tako dalje. I to je isto o Bosniacima u Tuskoj, ali istraživanje tamo je isto i ima isti princip kao istraživanje ja radim sad u Skadu. Dobro. To je zadnja publikacija i u blizini u granici at the Albanian Montenegrin border about Slavic Albanian symbiosis. So you see Slavic Albanian symbiosis always play a crucial role in the several research projects and so I want to start to the real topic. Just I, I, I thought it's maybe important if any one of you have an uh, interest in cooperation or uh, support or any ideas. Uh, I always uh, I'm always happy about uh, talks. Uh, Heinz, uh, you can contact me. You will see my email at the end of the presentation. So just quickly, like a speed dating uh, about the material here. Uh, for us, these are uh, Slavic groups uh, in uh, Albania. For us, important is the red mark group C uh, in Skodra um, and also in, uh, in the Vraka uh, region. Uh, so uh, this is a Skodra, a general view from the lake uh, Sk uh, Skodra and these are some special focuses on the left you see northern parts where you have a bigger population, uh, a bigger part of Slavic population and on the right side you see the city center and you can also see the multi ethnicities like in Bosnia that you have the Catholic church tower, the Orthodox church tower and the, the mosque minaret. Mm. So uh, I decided to show you this map. Uh, it's not so clear, unfortunately, because uh, um, Skodra is a, a, regional, uh, a regional and supra-regional center of gravity and hope for a wide variety of groups and had a historical significance much greater than today. And so, especially in the context of the Slavic uh, context of the Slavic Albanian context and symbiosis, it's very important uh, to show that 
uh, uh, there are a lot of relation, they are reaching until Novi Pazar here. And also, also to other places in the mountain, the Green Sanjak, and also to the north, uh, up to Nikšić um, here, and to the Malaysia. Uh, so uh, just in short, uh, that's interesting that for, uh, especially since the Ottoman Empire, there was uh, were also movements, or always any movements, migration, re-migration, re-migration, assimilations, re-assimilations. So uh, it's a very uh, interesting uh, place. Uh, uh, also today for researching, so on the right side you see the region uh, uh, around Skodra and the north. I just want to show you that here in that region you find the Vraka villages. That's a kind of special uh, place I will mention later, where you also can find uh, Slavic uh, Orthodox uh, population. But I concentrate uh, specially on the urban space of Skodra. Okay. So just to run through the history, uh, Slavic traces we have uh, since the sixth century. Um, uh, it's also mentioned during the Byzantine times. Uh, then very important is that uh, you have a Slavic Albanian symbiosis uh, throughout the greater region already in the Middle Ages. There are many Albanian and Slavic families trace their origins back to the same families. Uh, this also concerns local ruling dynasties, uh, noble families like the Balsha or Balshici. Just to mention them, uh, there uh, about uh, this topic, uh, I also have a big study, but it will be published just in, in, in two years uh, about this kind of uh, exchanges between Slav and Montenegrins. That's a very, very interesting story, and in this context, uh, uh, we uh, also research a lot of gravestones, historical, uh, and make uh, oral history interviews. Um, so, oh. Uh, just to, ah, okay, so then uh, uh, also Skodra was a part of the uh, Serbian kingdom under Stefan Uros uh, uh, the fourth. And uh, uh, then nevertheless, uh, in 1479, uh, the Ottoman, Ottoman uh, uh, came. And uh, so at this time, there was, uh, were a lot of uh, assimilation processes, also migration processes uh, uh, concerning to the Slavic population. Mm. The most part of the today's Slavic population uh, started first to migrate uh, from Montenegro in the 18th century. Uh, uh, these were Slavic Orthodox uh, Christian migrants and uh, up from the Congress of Berlin uh, uh, we had a, a huge uh, migration waves uh, from Slavic uh, Montenegrin uh, Muslims uh, uh, which uh, still today uh, uh, are called uh, Podgorichani and they call themselves uh, Podgorichani. Um, so uh, you see uh, the history is full of trouble of Albania at the beginning of the 20th century uh, and uh, this also uh, let uh, people migrate uh, uh, very much, uh, especially in the 1920s and 1930s. Uh, more uh, Muslim Slavs were coming to Albania uh, because they had a, a lot of pressure under the uh, SA, uh, SHS state. The system uh, under King Zogu in Albania was more liberal. The uh, Islam was dominant. Uh, and the borders were open at this time, especially in the 1920s. The relation was better between Albania and Yugoslavia. Uh, so um, then uh, that was very, very uh, interesting and had a lot of consequences uh, when uh, Enver Hoxha, the communist dictator, split with Tito, uh, uh, no, when Tito split with Stalin, uh, Hoxha also split with Tito, uh, and uh, they uh, uh, s uh, closed the border and saved the hermetic. So uh, many people uh, couldn't go back, Slavic people, because there was also kind of of a circular migration between Podgorica, the Podgorica region, and the Skoda region. And so the people anyhow were captured. They were, oh, oh my god, okay, five minutes. <laughs> That's just the history, okay. I just will fly through. Uh, during the communist time, the communist system was very nationalistic and they had a very forced and violent uh, assimilation and especially in Skodra, uh, the people were sus suspicious of uh, being spies for Yugoslavia. Uh, and so they oppressed the Slavs in Skodra more than uh, in other uh, regions uh, in Albania. So uh, many of them immediately after the uh, border was opened fled to Montenegro. But uh, a lot of them came back uh, in the course of the time uh, later. And uh, so you also find some people from, Slavic people from uh, Skodra uh, in other towns in Albania. Um, okay, uh, the number is uh, also really in uh, interesting. Okay, numbers are always discussed. 
that's a problem. There are estimations. Uh, the census is always very political created. You see, for example, here uh, 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 during uh, the time of, of Zorgu in the 1920s, uh, they counted uh, 25,000 persons, and an official uh, census uh, in uh, 1998, just 100. And in the last census, uh, 366 persons, but uh, the census was officially boycotted by ethnic political actors. So, uh, at all, it's estimated that they're living between 20,000 and uh, 35,000 uh, people in Skordwa with a kind of our Slavic origin. But just uh, a thousand, between a thousand and three thousand people are still able to more or less communicate uh, in the language. Uh, but uh, the language knowledge uh, is dying out uh, more and more. Uh, and uh, today, um, there is a very underestimated potential of persons with Slavic origin, and the state of research is poor in contrast to most other uh, Slavic groups in Albania, and uh, uh, there is an unused research potential. Okay, uh, uh, in the Slavistics is now uh, uh, famous that uh, Steinke and Ulit uh, uh, had a long research and they published four books, but the problem is that they ignored Skodra. They, as, you, as you can see, the fourth path, they went to Varaka. Borakai is a village where Bosniaks are living, near to Dudas, near uh, uh, to Draj. Um, and uh, they just uh, identify some families uh, in Skodra, and that's uh, completely wrong. So uh, it's an old research paradigm uh, that are limited to the rural space and marginalize urban spaces in their increased importance. And it's interesting because still in 1984, uh, Norbert Reiter says that dialectology in times of increased social mobilization and migration is a discipline that is being phased out and increasingly replaced by social linguistics. So dialect is not tied to the ground, but to the speaker, and when the speaker moves away, he takes them with it. Okay, I have some social psychological approaches. I will skip it about the question if they are a minority or not. Then we have assimilation processes to skip it, uh, some levels of identity. Maybe interesting is the, the right side that they have, a, the Slavic population has a balance between a kind of national, it means civic identity, Albanian, and an uh, ethnic or sub-ethnic identity, identity as a Slavic. Uh, I will, in the next uh, slide, I will show you the ethnonyms. There are, of course, several ethnonyms. Neutral, in a neutral way, I just uh, say no Slavs, but you will see. Uh, but uh, the majority uh, doesn't feel as a social minority in Albania. They have access to all the resources they have, and just on the private level, uh, they wish more uh, uh, to support the, uh, the features, the ethnic uh, uh, Slavic features. Um, and that's interesting. Uh, the majority today is Muslim, and uh, a minority is Orthodox. Uh, and you also find some, uh, a lot of mixed families, uh, also to give uh, mixed uh, children, uh, Muslim and Christian, uh, mixed n names to the children, Muslim and Christians, like Ismet Jovan, Maria, Aisha, are all brothers and sisters. And so uh, I always say that uh, you can, f the last real Yugoslavs you will find in Skodra. Uh, they are okay. Here we have a list of uh, ethnonyms and uh, language names. Uh, uh, they are relaxed toward the dis all these discussions uh, in former Yugoslavia about identity, uh, and that so they use uh, several uh, names for it. It also depends uh, which uh, association and which uh, government uh, supports whom. There uh, you also see Srbogorci. That's a more funny name to, to put Srbi Srbogorci uh, together. The people don't split each other uh, anyhow. <laughs> Some people say we are Serbs, some we are Muslims, uh, uh, we are Montenegrins, but also the Muslims, they do. So you don't find, uh, I didn't find anyone who uh, identified himself or herself as a Bosniak, uh, and I uh, finished, uh, I started 2007 there, but you can find uh, the family name Bosniako or uh, Bosniako uh, uh, there by families. I also have a gravestone, so I can show it. Uh, Okay, I'm, I'm over anyhow, but uh, can, can I have a, some, some minutes yeah, more, yeah, please? Course, That's, please? I'm, I'm sorry if it's okay for you. Yeah. Uh, I will run through. Ethnopolitical organizations. There is a little uh, this is an interesting story. We have Rosafa Moracha. Uh, it was founded immediately after the end of communism in uh, 1992. And uh, they uh, were closed to the Serbian or Yugoslavian, at that time Yugoslavian government. Uh, and uh, then we have Alba Montenegro, uh, which uh, were found in 2009. Uh, and they are, uh, uh, try to get in contact with the government of uh, Djukanovic. And 
and uh, the leader and founder is Burhan Chulic. Interesting is that Burhan Chulic also was the leader of Rosa Famoraca in 1992, uh, uh, but uh, in uh, 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 nine, uh, 2009, he was disposed uh, from the main members, uh, and there instead of him, uh, Pavle Yakoya came as a president. And it was a little bit psychological problem for Burhan Chulic because he was used to be a kind of boss of a, of a group. So then uh, he decided uh, to uh, s uh, split because uh, Yakoya is uh, orthodox and uh, still had a more closer ties to Belgrade, and so he decided to split split uh, and to declare uh, the Montenegrin minority, which is also recognized in Albania, uh, and to be now, uh, let's say, the boss of the uh, Montenegrinians. Uh, it doesn't matter if Orthodox or if uh, uh, Muslim. Uh, so I just have uh, some pictures, but I have to go through. The, they have a language course in Montenegrin. You can see, uh, unfortunately, the light is a little bit, uh, is not, not so good, but uh, there is written, yeah, Ucham yes, it's a special dollar. Tamo i uh, ovo je uh, uh, na ljevom stranu je certifikat uh, učitelja za crnogorski jezik. Alba Montenegro, tamo su, uh, we have uh, some presentations of act activities, uh, some literature to read, uh, then crnogorci, albanci pjevaju zajedno. Tamo je projekat, uh, dobro, to je Rosa Famorača, je, uh, uh, vi vidite razliku. You see the, the difference on the, on the left side, the flag, the Serbian, uh, they have a library. Uh, uh, on the left side, uh, they, you see they have a course in Serbian standard language. Uh, on, you know, on the left side, on the right side, you, uh, you, uh, they remember an old uh, school founded in 25 in Škodra, but uh, closed in the 1930s. Uh, okay, I will s f s uh, skip here and also the theory of uh, ethnolinguistic vitality. Um, that's a problem uh, uh, today. Uh, schools already established in Škodra uh, uh, during the Ottoman times and during the time of uh, S, uh, uh, SHS state in the 20s, closed by Albanian government in 1930s there, and you have the prohibition, suppression, and persecution during the communist period under Enver Hoxha, as I mentioned. Um, the <laughs> Uh, so, so they were forced very much uh, for assimilation. You had an ethnic and linguistic revival in the 1990s, but so many people migrated that uh, it, uh, uh, it counteracted uh, this process of uh, ethnic and, and linguistic revival. And today, Montenegrins are only officially recognized minority. Uh, they have no schools with state Albanian support or approval. There are some exceptions uh, in the region of Fier, in Rathli Bovsh and in Hamil. There is a group which uh, call themselves Muslim Serbs, migrated uh, in the 1920s from the Novi Pazar region to the province of Fier in southern Albania. And they were uh, organized uh, in, the, in the organization. They were together with the people in Škodra, but they split from Škodra in 2007, and you see linguistic landscape. Uh, there is a, a Kursi Jewish Serbe, and uh, uh, down you see Kurs Srpskog Jezika, i glavni sufinansiranje preko ministarstva i tako dalje. Se napiše tamo, to ne možeš da nađeš u skadru i tamo. I samo dva minuta da... Maybe that's, that's interesting to mention. Uh, very much. Okay, you have a, 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 a people of Slavic origin, uh, uh, mostly the old people just speak it. It's the younger generation, not the, they know some catch phrases and also the old people just use it uh, or don't use it that much in a family context between each other, sometimes more as a code switching, but uh, Albanian really dominates, but they have the knowledge. If you go uh, through the streets, uh, we made once an experiment, uh, we went through the streets for two and a half hours uh, and uh, my informant just spoke on the street with people he knew and uh, they were able to speak and we had a 14 short uh, interviews, uh, like small uh, talk interviews uh, within uh, two and a half uh, hours. So normally the people don't speak the language uh, voluntarily, but if you start to talk with them, they can speak. And then it's maybe this point is very interesting also for you. Uh, that, uh, you can find uh, Albanians with Slavic language skills, and the question is why? So the mostly uh, Albanians who or whose families emigrated from Tuzi in Montenegro to Škodra in the 1920s, uh, 
uh, they still uh, prevailed. Some language knowledge they became there as, uh, as children or even in the families. Uh, the, uh, uh, the parents and grandparents spoke a mix of Albanian and Montenegrin, and so the generation 60 plus are more uh, 70 plus still able to speak, but they are Albanians. Then we have the spouses of Slavs. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Then it's interesting, even in the 1990s, the economy was so ugly in Albania that Albanians went to Tuzi to live there for some years. But after, uh, when the wars were coming and the Kosovo War, uh, they left, they went back to Albania because it's more safe and they learned uh, the language there. And then we have traders, transporters, bus and taxi drivers, smugglers uh, commuting between Shkodra and Tuzi and Ulcin over a long period of time and they speak the language good. Then Albanian spies of the Dodger regime who were supposed to spy on the enemy Yugoslavs. They t just were teach the language uh, just to hear on the streets what uh, in Shkodra the, the Yugoslav people or the, the Slavic people are uh, saying. And then you, you have, of course, the Albanians who were partially socialized in close Slavic-speaking social professional environments there. And uh, just to show you some picture, this we have here some uh, Machale uh, in Shkodra in the northern part where you can find the people in Rus Imad and Rus Majar. It's interesting that it's called Majar, uh, Hangar. I have a mistake here. I see you have uh, about 60% of people with Slavic origin. Uh, okay, and just okay here about the dialect. Some, I have something, but okay, they speak the, the Zeta Senichko dialect, and you, you know uh, uh, better than me the features. And just maybe for the last 30 seconds uh, uh, to see um, the linguistic landscape here uh, where you can see the traces of the Slavic people. So uh, especially interesting are the graveyards. That's especially for you, Yasmin. Mm -hmm. I found it. It's a family of Serhanovic and Rodzic here. But you can also find uh, uh, Orthodox uh, Milan. You see the Albanian double L, Milan uh, Brajovic, uh, uh, Popovic you see on the right side. Um, Bosniaku, Tamo, geographical relation to Montenegro, Nikšići, Podgorica, oh. you have a Pirani, Piranić, Piranaj, sve variante, Pečiri, Murić, tako dalje, Durovi, Suknić, that's an interesting, uh, Agović and uh, Čulić, that's the same family uh, from the founder of the Alba Montenegro uh, uh, Foundation, and uh, thank you very much for your patience, sorry thank that you. I was so forceful. <laughs>